Ever wondered what chefs cook for themselves at home? We invited Chef Jonathan Whitener into our studio to cook his favorite at-home meal. He brought his own pans, knives, and a fatty Wagyu steak that deserves its own TikTok account. This is What a Chef Serves versus What a Chef Eats. Here's the second night you opened in 2017 in Koreatown. It was mine and my business partner Lin Ta's uh, first restaurant. Won a bunch of awards for our international type of small plates or fusion food, as I should say. I'm not afraid of that word, but <laughs> but yeah. Uh, our dishes are based on you know using local California ingredients, but using my French uh, training background uh, with a lot of you know me growing up in an Asian neighborhood in, in Little Saigon. So many international different types of cuisine that influence us in that kitchen. It's, it's a mishmash of everything. Our signature dish that we, that's been on the menu since day one is our blistered shishito peppers. And it's on top of a tonado sauce, which is like a preserved tuna, like mayonnaise type of sauce. So it has like mayonnaise, preserved tuna belly, fish sauce, capers, lemon juice. And on top of that, we dust it with some uh, salted plum powder, which is called lihing moi, which I like use a lot in, in Hawaii on top of candies and stuff like that. Or like in, in traditional Chinese culture, like they just chew on the salted plum itself. When Jonathan Gold wrote us up for the review, he said it was the best shishitos in the city, so we kind of like held on to that one. And then the other dish is uh, a skewer of escargot and bacon lardons that we hit on the hibachi. And then it gets glazed with some soy-based uh, tare, and then finished with a mint pea stew on top, fried garlic, and chili strings. Yeah, the shishito dishes is always on the menu, but the skewers and things like that constantly rotate throughout the weeks. We are an ever-evolving restaurant, like we never settle too long on dishes. Uh, what time do you usually get home? Like, when time do you start cooking for yourself? That all depends. <laughs> so sometimes it can be 10 o'clock if I let myself off early from a double, or it can be at one or two in the morning. I usually don't get off until like, you know, maybe 10 or 12 o'clock, so I'm not getting to cook for myself until like that time, or like sometimes not until one. What's the biggest difference between cooking in a restaurant versus your home? Well, the major difference between cooking in the kitchen in a restaurant and cooking at home is my number one thing is why I don't cook a lot at home is that I don't have a dishwasher. So if there's no guy to do all my dishwashing for me, so it's a one pan pickup what I like to cook at home. And as opposed to a restaurant where you have like, you know, they have the ingredients at hand. I have guys all over the place prepping, having things ready. It is busy. It is elbow to elbow all the time. So that's just the, the big major difference. After a full day of cooking, like how are you feeling? Do you, do you really want to cook for yourself when you go home? Nobody, no chef wants to cook for themselves <laughs> when they get off of work at home. But that's why, you know, the one pan pickup things for me, it's like I always figure out what I'm gonna make for me or my girlfriend, I mean my friends, whatever it is, it's always gonna be like, I'm gonna do everything in one pan. That way I don't have to clean up. And what are you gonna cook today? We're gonna cook what I like to eat on my day off or my last or my Friday of the week as I like to eat steak at home. This is like something I do for myself like once a month, like after like a big week, like a big month. You know, I think I cooked I cooked this for myself this last Sunday. You know, we had the food bowl and all types of events going on, stuff like that. So it was a long, hard week. So it's like I indulge myself by buying myself a really expensive piece of Wagyu beef. So we have a piece of A5 Wagyu beef. So I leave it a little slightly frozen so it can sear well without overcooking it. And I hit it in a super hot pan. So this is a, a five ply Maville pan made in France. I use them in the restaurant and at home because they hold temperature well, they cook really fast. So it's like if I'm cooking and I'm doing everything in one pan, I'm not losing a lot of heat when I'm switching things around. Black pepper. I don't hit Wagyu with any oil in the pan because she'll render out a lot of fat and sear itself in its own fat. Make sure I press it all the way down. Gotta make sure it gets a full sear. And while that's going, I am actually lactose intolerant. So to treat myself, because <laughs> I absolutely crave dairy all the time, is that I will every now and then eat some non-pasteurized cheese because that seam does not affect me, but I go ham and I'll eat like this entire wheel. So this is Mount Tam made by Calgo Creamery. It's a triple uh, cow cream. I just cut it up in little chunks like this. Extra virgin olive oil. Smoked Malden salt. I season everything finished with smoked Malden salt because I grew up eating a lot of barbecue on the weekends with my dad, so I like the taste of a lot of smoke. <laughs> so that sits there and that temps up so it'll be right by the time I'm done cooking. So check on this guy really quick. Yeah, almost there. A little bit more time. So this is a little avocado salad I like to do. This is something I've been eating since I was a kid. My mom's house used to have like a 100 year old avocado tree in the back. What we just do is really simply just like take a couple avocados, slice them up, 
This one's like really simple. So it's just avocados, like raw white onion. And we do a little distilled vinegar. With olive oil, just salt. The steak, we're gonna flip the steak. And you can see like the fat, like its own fat dripping help it sear really well. So I just push it down in the pan to make sure it's touching full contact with the pan so it gets a nice sear. So the second side will go a lot faster. These actually they don't make these anymore. These are actually highly collectible amongst chef nerds who collect stuff like this. <laughs> the stainless five ply. Those five layers of steel just hold the temperature a lot better. Most pot pans you buy like at the store are like two plies. So when you go to flip it or something, it cools down really fast. For my steaks, I go to McCall's Butchery a lot. I go pick up stuff there or I order stuff online through a bunch of different types of other apps and things like that. And from here, I'm gonna hit the cap of fat on the side. So it renders out a little bit. It's gonna be ripping hot and you're gonna burn your fingers, but it's very key to sear that side. See, that way you get a nice sear on it. Good, so now we're just gonna, oh, we're gonna let this rest for a little bit. And while that's resting, I add a little bit of butter in here. I don't drain the fat out that's in there because it's Wagyu fat. You spend, you know, a hundred bucks on a steak like this, you don't wanna waste any part of it. So don't throw away the fat. So add some shallots and sliced garlic. You notice I'm not adding any salt to it too because all the salt and pepper that, that rendered out from cooking the steaks in that pan. So you don't want to add any more salt because it'll get too salty. So soft. In here, I like eating shiitakes. And these are oyster mushrooms. I never turn the heat down on the pan. I just let it rip as hot as humanly possible. As you can see, like it already cooled down by adding everything to it. So I'll wait until it gets back up. Wagyu steaks don't uh, have to rest for too long because like I seared it when it was like a little semi-frozen, so it's still like a little cold on the inside because you want to enjoy that texture of like the structure of that meat. In this specific case, I cook it more like tataki than I do closer to a medium rare steak. This is a soy-based uh, mushroom-like sauce. So it's like closer to like Maggi, but it's, it's derived all from mushroom. Just a little bit. Now I'm gonna slice the steak. Just on a sliced bias. You can see, sick, perfect. Cool. Mushrooms are done. So I put the mushrooms on the bottom instead of like dumping them on top because then you'll overcook the meat. So this thing sits on the bed of mushrooms. I just finish it with just a little bit of olive oil, not too much. Some more smoked Malden, and there it is. That's how I get down when I cook for myself at home. I like making this avocado salad because I, traditionally it's a Cuban thing, but I like the taste of raw onions. I'm not a big leafy green guy, even though this is the lightest thing of it, even though it's avocado and it's very heavy. It just needs something to cut through it because all the acid and the vinegar in there helps me eat through the steak and stuff like that. And it's just a fun pairing of all these things together. Like I even eat the cheese with the avocado, mushrooms, the avocado and cheese, mix everything up. You know what I mean? It's just for me, this is an accompaniment that's like key for me. I mean, you saw how fast I made it. One pan, <laughs> everything in one pan, everything's side accoutrements and easy to eat. Is this something you would start in your restaurant? No. <laughs> it's too basic. It's too simple for us, you know, in terms of what we go for. And should we have you try it? I'm not gonna lie. I ate this thing three times this weekend. I am not interested in eating beef whatsoever. <laughs> You know, there's like the old saying, it's like chefs don't ever like eat after they're cooking, you know? Like every barbecue I do or I cook for friends or stuff like that, I'm like sitting in the corner drinking wine and drinking a beer or something. Cause it's like, I don't want to eat the food I just cooked. I'm grossed out by it. You guys please eat that before it gets cold cause it's gonna taste weird when it gets solidified. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Do you have anything else you want to add or things that we should know or? Yeah, I mean like, you know, for cooking for myself at home, like again, like the Wagyu and just using a little excess for myself because I spend my entire life and all day of the week, or every day of the week, like entertaining people with like the most luxurious things we can afford, that we can do. Like whether it's not like our biscuit or all day baby, you know, it was like this big unctuous biscuit to like, you know, the big ribeye steak. Here's the thing at you. It was like, you know, sometimes you have to like forget that you're not always entertaining guests that sometimes you have to take care of yourself. So it's like, I like to indulge in expensive things for myself when I'm at home to eat. Don't feel bad, spend the money.